включить. Угу. 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 help? No. Okay. No. Okay. I'm okay. And Thank now, you very much. Thank you. Let's continue with not one but two speakers, both coming from Merko, which is the new name of Izubar Commerce. Everybody knows Nikolai Stanoev, a QA architect with 12 plus years of experience, QA automation teams leader, guru, master and mentor, who's so skilled, so capable, so knowledgeable and experienced that he came here especially for you today on this stage to stay in silence and support his colleague Momchil, who will speak you the important things. Momchil Krustev. Momchil Krustev is a QA engineer with experience in the project for the cosmetic giant Clarence. Momchil participates actively in mentoring and onboarding oh, newcomers session, uh, and leading knowledge transfer sessions. They will talk about automation analysis today. Please welcome Nikolai Imomchil! <laughs> Yes, today I'm be just a co-speaker, and we start with normal technical defect. We need the clicking to change the slides, so please, can you give it to us? Does this click? Does it? No. Can you try it again? Mm -hmm. You can try with the other hand, maybe. Yeah, it's like a stand-up comedy show. Now it's time to and now storm. <laughs> and now we make some rain in the room. It's Let's working. see if it's working. It's working. Yeah. OK, so you're ready? Thank, yes. you. Thank you. Let's applaud them once more time. Nikki and Monty. Hello, everyone. My name is Monchil Krustev, and I'm a QA engineer at Marco. Today, I'm here with Nikolai Stanoev, who is a QA architect at Marco. Uh, the automation tests and the automation, automation of the tests themselves has been the hottest topic for the past few years, and everybody has been talking about it. But the thing is that there is one aspect of it that is rarely mentioned, and this is the analysis of the results from the automation runs. Today, with Nikki, we're going to show you how exactly we managed to boost this process. This is the agenda we're going to cover today. We're going to go to the whys, the whats, the solution we found, and the lessons we learned along the way. Starting off with why exactly we do automation testing and, and the analysis of the results after that. Well, it's pretty simple, really. In that way, we find the effects as early as possible, and we can uh, detect the root cause of the problems really, really early on. In that way, we get increased confidence in both our team, in our product, and what is even more, what is even better, uh, confidence of our clients in us. So the automation activities start with deciding what exactly needs to be automated at first. What are the absolute, absolute must set of cases that need to be uh, executed on a certain basis in order to guarantee that uh, the acceptance criteria are met and that the main functionalities of, the, uh, of our product are working as expected. After that, we proceed with the test creation and a test case execution. Once the test cases are executed, we get our test results. Now, the analysis of these test results, on the one hand, heavily depends on how exactly the tests are written and how the different errors and thrown exceptions are handled. But on the other hand, it really comes down to the use, to the tools we use to aggregate the data and present it to us. So, what do we use when we do results analysis? Our, the most important thing is the stack trace. Based on it, we can really decide what kind of problem we need to handle. Is it a product bug? Is it a product change? Or is something wrong in our automation scripts? Another option, if our testing framework provides that, we can make different screenshots or take the full image video of our testing session. This way, it can give us a lot of information what exactly has happened, and we can see on visually some error messages that we don't have information based on the stack trace for them. And the last thing is all the different logs that we can add while the test is working. All those items, we can see them quite well packed in different reporting tools. For example, 
in Cucumber reports. We have all that information pretty well aggregated and easy for our eyes. Another example is our reporting. It's really good, free, open source reporting tool. And it has two more features which are quite good for analyzing results and they save us a lot of time. First one is grouping failed test cases based on stack trace. And this way we can see how many unique failures we have from our execution. So if you analyze one of them, you know what's the root cause of the problem for the rest which are part of that group and saves a lot of time. Another feature is the timeline report. I'm pretty sure that every one of you is running your test cases in parallel and sometimes you have concurrence issues. With the timeline report, you can quite easily see which tests were running in parallel, try to reproduce the situation and catch the bug and fix it. It could be automation problem, it could be a product problem. At this point of time, you don't know. So what's the problem with those two great reporting tools? I can give you two reasons. First one is that they are static. This means that you can read, watch the data, but you cannot try it inside of them. So once you make your analysis today or yesterday, you need to use another system to put that information and to reuse it for tomorrow's analysis, which is bad because you, you need to mess with another system. It could be Excel, it could be different test case management system, it could be a notepad on someone's laptop. It's really bad. Another problem is that they are not quite useful when multiple people are doing the analysis at the same time because you don't know which test was already analyzed. You don't know what are the root cause problems for the previous failures. And even if you get that information by communicating with your colleagues in different channels or live, when you start analyzing certain tests which is not analyzed, another colleague which is with the headset on, on their head and listening to some heavy loud music, they will not hear you and they will do and spend the same time with analysis of the same test. And the solution for all those problems we found in. So this is the, the solution we found. This is the report portal. The report portal is free test automation dashboard. It uses artificial intelligence and visual representation of the test runs to provide us with clear picture of how the specific run went and what's wrong with it. The combination of machine learning and uh, real, life an real life analytics make it a really powerful tool for our team and really helps us in making go or no go decisions. So these are the four characteristics of the report portal we are going to cover today. We're going to start with the basics. We're going to mention the unique error analysis. We're going to go through the dashboards. And after that, we'll finish with the cherry on the cake, the auto analysis itself. Starting off with the report portal basics. This is the uh, default view that you're going to see uh, when you open the, the report portal for the first time. All the different runs are collected in different launches. It's called launch in the report portal. And as you can see, uh, it has some basic info in it, like the duration of the run and uh, how many hours ago it was started. But most, more importantly, it has a breakdown of all the test cases that were run by their, by their past and fail rates. After that, we have a breakdown of the failed cases themselves by the different types of, the, of them. Now, we have configured only four types of um, statuses for it, but this, is, this can be configured but by how many you can, you can have, like 10 different types or 20, however you need, how many you need, how many specific you need, you can do that. As you can see, everything is color-coded. All the different types are color-coded. They have counters on them. So starting from uh, just from a quick glance, you can get an idea how did the run went, what is wrong with it, and how to proceed with it. And this is how the uh, different tests look when you open them. Um, starting from the top to the bottom, in this green rectangle, we have the history of the case. These are all the previous runs from, for a certain time period that were run with the case. So everything, again, is color-coded with red for uh, failed and green for passed, of course. Below it, below each run, there is an abbreviation of uh, the, the cause for the failing of the test, of the case. For example, PB for product bug, etc., etc. Moving down, down forward is the, the retries counter. Now, the report portal gives us this ability to have different retries of the same case within the same run. 
not in a different one, but within the same one. In that way, we can easily distinguish and filter out the uh, failings of the case because of faulty environment or misconfiguration or whatever else is going on with the runner right now. And below that, in the blue rectangle, is all the information that is gathered for the case from the run. We get all stacks, uh, sorry, we get the all logs, we got, we got the stack trace, we got the details from the, for it, we got different at attachments, we get item details, everything a, a QA might need for making a decision about this specific case and how to proceed with it. Once we finalized all this data, just, just a few clicks away, once we finalized it, uh, we are ready to make our decision and this is how the screen for it looks. As you can see, manual selection is selected by default, and below it, we have the different uh, failed case types uh, displayed. Below it, there is a comment section, and below it, uh, there are two options, one for linking a brand new issue, and one for creating an uh, issue. Right, so after that, I'm going to just uh, go a bit over the auto analysis suggestion, suggestions we get. As you can see, on the left of the manual selection, there are three different tabs with different percentages, and they are called analyzer suggestions. Now, these suggestions are made by the auto analysis itself, and it's a bit of a combination of black magic and algorithms and um, working with the stack trace from the previous cases. But this gives us a pretty good suggestion of what might be wrong with the case, and we can quickly link the already existing issue to this run. Moving on with the last thing we have for the decision making, this is the history of the case. In this tab are linked all the previously linked tasks and uh, JIRAs and whatever you have to this case. From here, you can quickly select whatever you're going to need, link it with all its um, artifacts to the current case run. And with that, we continue with the unique error analysis. That's the next feature that we want to speak about. It's it was added in report portal quite soon. It was like in June this year. It's live since version 5.7.0. And basically, it has something that we already saw in our reporting. It gives you capability to group your failures based on stack trace. And this way, with just a couple of clicks, once you know what is the root cause of the problem for, for the failure test case that you have already analyzed, with just a couple of clicks, you can provide the same information, status, issues, comments, connections with different bug tracking issues with just a couple of clicks. And this is going to save you again a lot of time if you do this manually for every test one by one. So the dashboards are where you're going to spend most of your time when you're working with the report portal. This is what uh, a dashboard will look like in our team. Uh, as you can see, oh, these are four different dashboards, but I'll get into that a bit later. So. You can see on the left, there is a breakdown of the failed and the past cases once again. Everything is color-coded. There is a uh, progress bar below it. Really nice and easy to, to follow through. After that, on the right, we have a breakdown again of the failed cases by their types. Uh, everything color-coded, everything is clickable. And for example, if you want to see only the product books, you can click on the product book link. Or if you want to go to all the system issues, you can click on the system issue links, etc., etc. Now, all these dashboards that give us the information about the run are working with different widgets. The, different, the, the widgets give us different information from the run. They are aggregated and present different aspects of the run. For example, the ones you just saw were uh, the widgets for the overall statistics. But there are many, like 20, I believe even more, widgets right now working with the report portal. Uh, one of them in the blue rectangle is the flaky case uh, table that gives us the 20 most uh, flake, the 20 flakiest cases within a certain time period. And in the orange rectangle, we have the most failed cases table, which gives us the 20 most failed cases uh, within a certain time period. Now, the good thing about these widgets is that uh, they can work together within a single dashboard. So whatever you might need as a team, you look probably something like that. In this dashboard, we have the overall statistics, we have the flaky tests, we have the most failed cases. Whatever your team might need, or you as a team member might need, or maybe on a project level might be needed as an information, this can be done with these widgets. 
combined, customized, uh, customized and tailor-made for your needs. And this leads to the next topic and feature that we want to speak. It's called auto analysis. To be honest, it was like 2019 when we heard for the first time about that tool. Our colleagues from EPAM just released it and put it open source for the full QA on everywhere in the world. And so we started trying hardly with it to play and to understand how it works. It's in, during the COVID, it, it was 2020 or 2021. It took us around six, seven months to experiment with it and to learn how it works, how to tune it, how uh, and properly use it. It takes time to get familiar with all the tricky parts inside of the, the tool itself. And then for almost a year, we already use it in some of our projects. But before I go in details, I would like to share how you can configure it. Some key things that we have learned in the hard way for those couple of months. So first, in Report Portal, you might have different projects. Every project has its own configuration, and that configuration you, is automatically is also part of it. The feature by default can be disabled or enabled. This means that when you trigger a launch and the launch completes, if the feature is enabled, it is going to trigger auto analysis automatically. And based on the results, you might have changes, changes into the tests to be moved from to investigate state to some other state. If the feature is disabled by default, then you need manually to trigger auto analysis if you want to use it. Next thing, which is in a green, shows how many walk lines will be collected and added into the Elasticsearch. After a few months, Report Portal is going to use only Elasticsearch as a database, and this is information which is added and used after that to provide different suggestions produced by auto analysis. So collecting the right information here is important to have good results and to have suggestions reaching the threshold. The threshold configuration is part into the red box, and this is the minimum value which must be met by different suggestions in order auto analysis to automatically move a test from to investigate state to another type of state. It could be automation bug, product bug, system issue, or any other custom uh, status that you create. And now leads to the next page where you can see how auto analysis is working. For everyone who want to know everything to smallest details, you can scan the QR code, watch the full video, it's 90 minutes, and you're going to have information like me. For everyone else who don't want to do that and want to listen to me in the next one minute, uh, you'll see how on a high level it works. So let's start with the stack trace. You can see <laughs> just two colors, but they are basically three. Uh, in the green, the main thing is that you have the uh, assertion message, the failure, and after that, you have some information in the stack trace about the assertion library that was used. Below it, you have other lines, which is telling which method exactly has failed on which line, from which class, and so on. So auto analysis is taking that information, and on the background, it does a couple of things. First, they remove the timestamp and the punctuations. Uh, why the timestamp is removed? Because it is going to increase the boost of uniqueness, and this is going, yes, it is going to boost the uniqueness, which is going to reduce the chance to find the matches, matches and suggestions. So in that case, they replace it with a timestamp. Also, they remove some punctuations, remove some special keywords from which are provided by your testing framework. Guys, resolution is not good, so people does not see any, everything in a good way. Then they also remove punctuations, any numbers which are provided on which line, which method something has failed. And then they put all that data, which is called sanitized test, test into the elastic search. Some heavy mathematic formulas are applied, some vectors are created into the space, a little bit more magic is created on the background, which you need to have high proficiency in mathematics to understand it in deepest details. And then the basic users see this. Me, Momchi, or my colleagues, we assume that we are basic users. We play with the system, we use it, but we still don't know to small details how exactly it works. So if you are lucky, like in our case, on a launch view, you're going to see that your test was moved from to investigate to another state. If you go into test case view, you're going to see that respective tests, which are already analyzed, have AA tag. 
this means that auto analysis was triggered and the suggestion, the information, the analysis which was done on those tests was done by auto analysis. When such analysis triggers and provides suggestions, you have automatically copy the all the information which you have into the baseline analysis. This means if you have connected the old analysis with a new bug tracking issue, that information will be automatically added to, to the latest one. If you have some other comments, they will be automatically added into this one. So with just a couple of clicks and waiting of minute or two in order the auto analysis to complete, you are going to have all that information ready for you. Working with the report portal is more like a two-way process. As much as the report portal is learning to work with our framework and our test cases and everything, we are learning just as much from him, from him of about how to work exactly with him. And for, for the past year that we've been using the report portal, we've gathered some knowledge and some insights that we'd like to share with you. Starting with the first one, which is not to use generalized uh, assertion messages. Try to make them as specific and as unique as possible. In that way, both your QA team will make better uh, decisions about it, about the cases, and also the report portals auto analysis will make even better and more precise decisions and suggestions. Next one that we want on a hard way is that every time when you decide to upgrade your report portal instance, you need to rebuild your indexes. Otherwise, you are risking for a couple of days until you remember to review them. To, to see that auto analysis is not working, unique error analysis is not working, and some other features might also break. So every time when you do that and update your report for instance, just rebuild indexes. The third one is uh, pretty simple, actually, and part of our profession. So as they say, uh, validation or verification is the highest form of trust, and this goes also for the auto analysis of the report portal. It is quite possible that a uh, regression has been made and a bug has re-emerged that has already been, already been fixed. Uh, when the auto-analysis goes through that bug the, to the failed case, it will link the already closed uh, bug to that. And this will lead on the QA team to think that the, uh, the issue is already being taken care of. Well, it is not. And it will remain, remain like that until somebody not, takes note of it. And the last advice is that you need to be careful with code refactoring. I know that everyone likes code refactoring because every, after every refactoring, things are better and better. But if you do quite often code refactoring, first, there is a chance to lose your history of the test. And second, uh, the suggestions which are provided by the auto-analysis might not hit the threshold that you have set. So if you do that quite often, you need to change the threshold, which must be met in order to analysis to provide results and to change the test from to investigate to another state. So everything so far sounds great, but we'd like to share with you some statistics and feedback from our colleagues to show you the progress that we've made uh, since we've been using the report portal. And let's start off with the actual people uh, involved in the analysis. So before we started using the report portal, only one uh, team member at the time could do the automation analysis. Right now, one year after that, four or more people can do the analysis at a time, depending on our team's needs. So we get four or more people that do the analysis at a time. Nobody's hitting over each other's hands. And this actually leads to 80% increase of the people, uh, I'm sorry, 80% of the QA team right now are using the report portal and are heavily involved in the automation analysis. The second thing I'd like to point out is the time spent on analysis. Now, before we started using the report portal, only one team member could do the analysis and it took them between four and eight hours each and every day to do the analysis. In that way, we get the results way, way later in the day and it's, this was of no use to us, especially in go or no go situations. Right now, with uh, everybody on board working on the report portal, we get the results within two hours of the start of the working day. So we get our, uh, we get our analysis by 11 in the morning and we have more than enough time to make a decision for go or no go. And the last thing I'm going to share with you is some feedback from my colleagues. Starting from the top, everybody in my team is uh, more than happy to work with these dashboards. Visually, they're really intuitive, really simple to work with. You get an idea of what's going on, what is wrong, what is right with the run. So it's easy, uh, so it's really easy for them to navigate visually through the, um, all this information. 
uh, the test case history is so really important because, uh, as the people before me mentioned, there are a lot of flaky tests, and you need to have an idea why exactly this case is flaky, what is wrong with it, and with just a few clicks away, you can see what exactly went wrong with each run. The autoanalysis is the thing that actually um, cuts the most of our time spent on autoanalysis on, uh, analysis of the automation run. So it takes a bit of time to, for the report portal to start using it properly, yes, but after that, it's been uh, making great and great and even better suggestions with each run. And one last thing that uh, we actually didn't uh, anticipate to, to achieve with re imp uh, importing the report portal for use with us, it is its low learning curve. It is really user-friendly, even from, from the first look, it is really user-friendly and it's super easy to use, even from people with uh, little to no experience with the uh, report portal itself, or even with people with little to no experience with uh, automation analysis too. This is really helpful for all our new joiners to the team and people that are just starting to uh, get into the automation. So with this, we conclude our presentation and we'd like to thank you for your attention. Hey, 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 thank you, thank you, Momchi and Nikki. Well done, that was great. I have read that. I'm very well. Really, thank you. Very well. Very well. Very well. <laughs> so, do you have any questions? Guy, guys, just a second, one minute. Okay. I would like huge applauses for Momchi. This is the first time he's speaking for more than 10 people, and I think he did quite well. Well done, Momchi. Well done, Momchi. So, so, questions? Any questions? David. One question okay. here. One, two, three. Yeah. Um, just a question regarding how you maintain it. So you build it every time. Closer. Oh. Hello. Um, so you build it every time you run the test, or it's still up to date somewhere? So, for example, you have the Docker set up in a, in a cloud. So, what what's uh, going on with availability? You mean how we set up the tool? Yeah, how it, how it's accessible? It so is, you, well, documentation in the report portal is quite good. It's a lot better what it was four years ago, and all the small things that you need to tune in order to set up for the first time are our dimension. It's a Docker container, and when we need to, to rebuild it, it's just writing two, 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 two commands, which the report portal already has been shared, and then everything is working out of the box. The only thing that you need to not forget is to rebuild the indexes, which is just a click. Yeah, so it's like plug and play, basically, nowadays. Yes. Okay. Okay, any questions? Here. One more question over here. Mr. Nikolai Abramov. Yeah, thanks for the great talk. Um, you mentioned that you do some rerun of the failed tests. Do you do it automatically? And what's the criteria that you use if you do it? Go ahead. Well, the uh, retrace functionality is now, um, we have it set, them, set it up in Jenkins, uh, just for us to have a single, like a first run and then a second run. We have a look at them and if the, different, they're diff the case fails in different steps, then we uh, decide like maybe if the environment went wrong or uh, misconfiguration or something or, or node built is on the environment right now. So in that case, to get a better picture, we try to eliminate all these, like we do the proper configurations, we get the last build, and then we need, if needed, we make a third rerun. And that this is then counted on the uh, retrace counter. Okay, so you take the decisions? Yes, we personally, we, as the QA team, do them manually, decisions. Okay. thanks. Thank you. Another question? If there are no more, okay. One more? One more. Mr. Gorbunov. Thank you. So, uh, have you ever considered naming report portal just report portal? 
<laughs> it's not our tool. It's created by colleagues from EPAM, uh, oh, okay. and they made it open source for the rest of QA community to use it. So that's a question to them. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Uh, in another interesting thing that you mentioned uh, at the very end is like a slow learning curve, like low learning curve, like short, short. Okay. But how, how it matches with you spending seven months on understanding how it works? That's a really good question. To use the tool is not a problem. Even a child can start using it, and after two hours, they will note all the screens, how to go to different things, and how to use it. The problem is how to tune it to do the job and auto analysis to return valid results. And that really depends on how good your failing messages are and how much data you want to collect and add into the last research to provide the suggestions. Uh, oh, and but basically, so the idea here is that you may use this tool to improve your process. So you have to get it, get started with it, then maybe change your code that it will throw meaningful, ex more meaningful exceptions or more unified exceptions. That's that's the way to, to use it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Cool. This is just one of the steps in order to to use it in the wise way. Okay. And last question, maybe. No. Okay. Please oh, applause for just one question from okay. my side. Are there people using report portal in their companies and they want to share their feedback for just one or two minutes or their expectation from the tool? Over now there. is the time to shine. Okay. Mr. Anton Angelo. I was wondering whether to share like a question or a statement about it, because as you know, last time, last year, I talked about it at my speech, and actually we were using it with Nikki in some of the projects, and actually my feeling there is that um, we had some problems. First, um, it takes too many resources, like um, you need to pay a lot for machines, especially if you run it. Um, on many projects, you know, it's for one team, it's fine, but when you scale it, it's expensive. The second thing is that um, I'm really surprised that you didn't hit problems when you're doing upgrading because we were using it for three years maybe and uh, there were many upgrades and not all of them went really well. Uh, like um, on, on many of the upgrades, actually, there, there were breaking changes, which means that you need to delete everything and start from scratch, and then this auto-analysis is pointless. At least th this was our experience, and then we, we were um, at some point wasting so many time to, to maintain it, and then we moved to other tools. And also, if you use the real-time um, you know, when, when you run with the test runner, you, you have real-time data, like test by test, but this, uh, you know, it connects every time to the Docker and it depends where it's hosted. And uh, this was really slowing down many of the tests, especially if there's someone else. And this means that we had to do some hacks, for example, upload directly the results, later on to uh, report portal, which is again, not really good. But this is my experience. Like, I, I like the tool. I present it every time on many lectures. However, it has some problems. Many they mitigated them, I don't know. I will give it a try again after your talk. Yeah, thank you for the feedback because you know, this is why we got gathered here to exchange experiences and everything. So for the past year, we haven't had any serious problem, problems like that. We've been using it you know, to knock on wood uh, successfully. We haven't had any major failures. Whatever failures we've had, like the most of them weren't related with the report portal itself, but some with the Jenkins, some with the, our environments, but with it's nothing as related. So hopefully it stays like that. Uh, just an idea in October this year, there will be another probably breaking uh, upgrade from the one that you spoke because probably you have started with report port of four and then when you move to five with postgrad changes of the database, this is when those issues happened. Now in October, they are going to release a version where all the database information will be just in Elasticsearch in order to reduce the problem with the storage because now with the postgrad, it takes huge amount of storage, and if you own the hardware, it's not a problem. But if you go in AWS or another cloud, yes, you might going to hit the problems which Anton mentioned. And now, if you use the latest version, it is still using Postgre and Elasticsearch, 
but after October, it will be just Elasticsearch, and I believe that the things will be even better. And from a resource point of view, you might see a change. Okay. Thank you. And I have an idea for you. There are two more slots free for lightning talks. You can <laughs> take them and, and just do this talk uh, on the stage. I, I, th I think it will be really interesting, wouldn't it? Okay. Thank so you. your applause for Nikki and for Monty. Thank you. Thank you. And that was really great first experience. You're naturally born for the stage, you have and to know. now, beer break! 15 minutes beer break, so we're we'll waiting for you here. Uh, six, five. Uh, five past six. Uh, five, uh, five past four.